Ever since Will Wright created the video game The Sims, people have been fascinated by the idea of a virtual world that could simulate day-to-day -day life. Professor Sharon Collingwood and her students are virtual evidence that learning has no boundaries. What is it that you're trying to communicate to your students or your constituents or whoever it is that you're trying to inform or educate? What is it that you're trying to teach them about? Then think about how you've structured your lessons or your materials to meet the constraints of the real world. The size of the class, the ability to move your chairs, your tables. If you could wipe all of that away and just start off with a clean slate of how it is that you would communicate it to them the best, you have that opportunity in Second Life. Second Life is really just another browser like Internet Explorer or any other one, but it's in 3D. When you're surfing websites in Internet Explorer, in Second Life you'll be going around to islands and libraries and you'll go to jazz clubs and, and it's all in 3D. The class I teach is Women's Studies 110D. It's a distance class. And what we cover is just sort of general topics on women's studies. In most online courses, the lectures are kind of written out for you. Um, in this one, we meet in Second Life, and it's very visual. You don't sit in the chat room or something like that and just you know write out stuff and, and talk to your teacher through email all the time. You're now able to interact through objects in the world with other people to be able to construct knowledge, both between the students and between the student and the instructor. We have avatars, and pretty much we all sit around in a circle and have a discussion, and she'll have the uh, discussion questions like posted up on a board, and we'll just kind of discuss them as a class. It's about coming to class and testing what you've learned against what other people have learned, getting in groups and discussing it, uh, building on what you already have. That's the social part of it, and that's what distance education has always been lacking. It's always been distant. Instead of having to have an expensive lab that would showcase the phenomenon that you're trying to teach where everyone would sit and watch it happen in the lab or watch a video of it happening in the lab, they could construct the situation for the object or whatever it is that they're trying to learn about to do the action that it's supposed to do and have everyone have an experience of being able to do it themselves or to experience it themselves rather than having one person experience it and everybody else watching it. You know, anything that I need for class, I just make it. It takes me about 30 seconds to make a 30 foot by 30 foot flat space for them to walk out on and have them work something out. I was teaching a course one time and we were working and I had a skybox classroom which is about 700 meters in the air in Second Life and I had them all sitting around at little tables and they were discussing a problem and I was just going to move a chair and I accidentally erased the floor. And the whole lab went, oh, like I'd really erased the floor. And I thought, you know, this, this is immersive learning. These people are really, you know, into what's going on here. So you have to think about the cognitive impact of the program itself. Ohio State is really supports us a lot. We have a lot of technology. We have the digital union that really helps as the digital union's doing its own work in Second Life. Certainly here at the digital union, we're very excited about this technology, but we don't want to just throw it in the classroom. We want to figure out how is this really going to benefit the educational experience? How is this going to help the student? It's inevitable it's coming. You know, people say, well, Second Life, is it a fad? Well, Second Life may, you know, may or may not be the company that does this in the future, but nobody's going to look at technology like this and say, nah, you know, they're going to go with it. I mean, it's coming. Virtual worlds are going to be with us and probably are only going to increase in importance. Even if it's not Second Life, in, in the future in academics, our virtual worlds are going to be more and more important. In the future, students will be able to get into their virtual world using immersive technologies like Second Life to construct their meaning of what it is that they've read or what they've learned in class. We have a real strong desire here to make that technology approachable and usable by the faculty. For teachers, I think we have to scramble. I mean, I think that we really have to learn how to use this technology, how it's to our advantage. 
for the final, we all meet in real person. They have to actually show up as a physical real person with pen and pencil and paper and take a real test. We've never seen each other before, m most of us. Uh, I would say no one in the class knows each other. Uh, we've never met the teacher besides her little avatar. I haven't seen any of my students yet. Uh, I'll see them at the exam, but I haven't seen them in class or they haven't come to my office because it's a distance class. It's going to be fun to find out. Her avatar is on roller skates and she's got purple hair. Now, I haven't met her yet, so I'm going to guess that um, she is nothing like that. Um, I, I've got to guess that she's probably uh, in her 40s or 50s. Um, brown hair, maybe a little gray, a little bit of gray in a little bit. I know it's going to be funny. I'm just so tempted to come into the final on roller skates. You know, because I wear roller skates all the time in Second Life. I'm not going to dye my hair a tasteful shade of lavender or anything, but I, I, the roller skate thing really tempts me.